welcome to the next session of photosynthesis in higher plants. In the previous session we came across various experiments that shows that light is necessary for photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is also necessary for the process of photosynthesis, even water is also required for the process of photosynthesis. Now continued with the experiments, so as we came across a heading called as a early experiments on the photosynthesis as I have already told you there were many scientists mainly hundreds of scientists were there who were involved in the discovery of the photosynthesis who were involved in identification of how exactly the photosynthesis occurs. Now we are across the hunting of the photosynthesis where the elaborate session is discussed in this topic. Then with the continued experiment let us go to the fourth experiment, fourth experiment is a T W Engelmann's experiment. So yesterday we have came across the three experiments, which shows the photosynthesis occurs in the plants. Now next comes a T W Engelmann who has worked from, uh, from 1843 to 1843 to 1909. The early experiments which we discussed they were Joseph Priestley experiment and he was the first person to discover oxygen in the year 1774. Then later on came a person called as John Ingenhaus now who showed that oxygen is oxygen bubbles are released during photosynthesis almost their experiments were similar but he confirmed it also. Then later experiment was Julius von Sachs who showed that glucose is produced during the process of photosynthesis while it is stored in the form of a starch in the plants. That is why we say starch is the reserve food material in the plants. Then comes the next experiment T W Engelmann's experiment and this T W Engelmann's experiment is based on a algae called as a cladophora. Now what he does is he takes a prism then he releases the white light which splits into the spectrum of light. So Vibjor spectrum, then what exactly he did, then what he concluded from these experiments, okay. So let us see that. Now T W Engelmann what he has did is, he has taken a prism and he released the light. When light is released to the prism so which already you know this light almost we call it as a visible spectra of light it splits to form into Vibjor colors. Then after splitting he has placed a glass plate, a glass plate was taken and he has placed a algae, one algae was placed and this name of the algae is a cladophora. And the suspension was consisting of uh, aerobic microbes. Now this was the sus suspension which consists of uh, aerobic microbes. Mainly he has taken aerobic bacteria. So let us call it as a bacteria. So he has taken the suspension of uh, aerobic bacteria here. Then look at this part what was his observation? When light was released to the prism, the prism splits the spectra of light into Vibjor and this Vibjor when it was exposed to a suspension consisting of aerobic microbes in which an algae was placed called as a cladophora, then the wavelength of light almost at the wavelength of light red and blue spectra of light, the microbes would accumulate there, microbes accumulated towards that point because the oxygen was releasing from that point. As the microbes were aerobic, aerobic refers to they respire oxygen, they require oxygen for their survival, these aerobic mi microbes they accumulated, they formed into groups at the wavelength of light where there was a red light as well as a blue light. 
then he showed that from these two wavelengths of light an, uh, an absorption spectra as well as action spectra were discovered and which will be dealt in the later parts of the studies. Okay. Then what he concluded? He concluded that, that this algae it works or maximum wavelength of light that is absorbed by the plants for the evolution of oxygen is red and blue wavelength of light. Right. So, this is what is called as an Vibzior spectra of light. Right. So, we are going to write the statements of this only. Right. So, what Engelmann has done? T. W. Engelmann, what he has did is he has just exposed the cladophora and algae and this algae was placed in a suspension consisting of aerobic bacteria. Then he has taken a prism to which the white light was released where we call it as a visible spectra of light and uh, it got splitted into vibjor and uh, the oxygen was released at the red wavelength of light as well as the blue wavelength of light and the microbes got accumulated towards that. That means he showed that for the process of photosynthesis this visible spectra of light is required for the photosynthesis. Then apart from that specially the red wavelength and blue wavelength are very much uh, necessary for the process of photosynthesis. This was the conclusion. Okay, so, T. W. Engelmann matter on the experiment enu. All simple experiment matter the amal either in the conclusion a large conclusion was drawn. Okay, anantar dali gota itu yav wavelength of light plant uh, chlorophyll molecule absorb matter the other kage based on this e, e, experiment malana absorption and action spectra absorption and the yav wavelength of light plant absorb martava the green part of the plant absorb martati but action and tantadra photosynthesis activity high irbe kantadra yav spectra beku and the notha the visible spectra and this visible spectra it ranges between 400 to 700 nanometer wavelength of light okay so vibjor it lies between 400 to 700 nanometer wavelength of light we call it as visible spectra idikna visible spectra of light and kareethivi ee visible spectra olagade ee wavelength ittantadara matra plant olagade photosynthesis aagtada below this and above this wavelength so it does not help in the process of photosynthesis right so this is regarding the part of his experiment right then here what shall we do is we'll let's write the characters of T. W. Engelmann's. Okay, now look at the characters here. The statement that has been stated after the conclusion of the experiment by T. W. Engelmann. So, using a prism, as we have saw the experiment just now, we have written the statements here. Using the prism, he split light, so visible spectra of light, into spectral components and then illuminated a green alga and the name of that algae is cladophora. Then placed in a suspension of aerobic bacteria. So, this was in a petri plate aerobic bacteria were placed. The bacteria were used to detect the sites of oxygen evolution that means at which wavelength of light the oxygen was evolved. So, that was detected by these bacteria. Then he observed that bacteria accumulated mainly in the region of a blue and red wavelength of light. So, this is most important. So, the bacteria has got accumulated in those regions where there was evolution of oxygen and oxygen was evolving at a visible spectra of light where a blue and red light was present. In this algae where it used to absorb that wavelength of light of the split spectra. Split means it is a splitted into vibjor. Then a first action spectra of photosynthesis. So, what is this action spectra? What is this absorption spectra? Again we are going to deal it in the next class. So, first action spectra of photosynthesis was thus described. So, it resembles roughly the absorption spectra of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. That means chlorophyll A is the chlorophyll molecule which is present in almost all the plants along with uh, some other organisms also where they uh, synthesize their own food like that of the euglena. Euglena is commonly called as a plant animal that euglena has a chlorophyll A. But chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B are the pigments uh, which is present in all the plants. Then along with that chlorophyll A is almost universal in all the plants. Instead of chlorophyll B 
chlorophyll c and chlorophyll d can be also present which you have already studied in the plant kingdom like that of the algae green algae brown algae and red algae as they have chlorophyll a and b a and c a and d okay so here uh, the absorption spectra of chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b the chlorophyll molecules are the pigmented molecules so they absorb a particular wavelength of light of the visible spectra of the sunlight so what absorption spectra or what this visible spectra or which wavelength of light is required for the rate of photosynthesis to increase the process of photosynthesis was first described by T W Engelmann. So, regarding the absorption spectra need not worry here. So, we are going to study with the graph in the next class. Okay. Then almost by the end of 19th century or in the almost in the mid of the 19th century the equation the empirical equation for the photosynthesis was given and with the help of the carbon dioxide water so how the carbohydrates were synthesized so finally an equation was given where we call it as the empirical formula and the formula can be written in the form that co2 plus h2o in presence of light carbon dioxide and water in presence of light it produces carbohydrates plus oxygen. So, this was the empirical formula. Now, here CH2O it refers to a carbohydrate this refers to a carbohydrate like glucose. right so empirical formula or we can also call it as the general formula right so by the mid of the 19th century the equation was framed later on this equation went on changing and the final equation for the photosynthesis was formed okay so this is regarding the part of the t w engelmann experiment now let's go to the fifth experiment where we used to call them as early experiments for the process of photosynthesis. Now to write the characters, to write these characters just pause the video, rewind it, write the characters. Then the last experiment that we are going to study it now is regarding the Cornelis Van Neel experiment where he has studied experiment on uh, sulfur bacteria. Okay, so next experiment is regarding Cornelis Van Neel. Okay, so let's call it as the last experiment of a uh, Cornelis. Now this Cornelius, uh, he was present in between 1897 to 1985. Okay, from the year 1897 to 1895. So what he has stated, right? Now he has given a milestone experiment just to show that oxygen which is liberated during the process of photosynthesis it comes from water not from CO2 during the process of photosynthesis. Dvithi samshreshna kriya agu aga in oxygen release act of the plants in the adu water in the by the breakdown of H2 in the bartha da but CO2 in the O2 release agangila anta no anta da experiment here thano by using green and purple bacteria in his experiments and later on instead of water hydrogen donor and then the h2s hydrogen sulfide the one experiment martha no i h2s then the last end product sulfur products birth out you can have h2o to one daga then this h2o gets oxidized to release o2 oxidation and other removal of hydrogen hydrogen remove my daga o2 only the auction release act that deliberate act at the end here the now so this was the experiment which was given by cornelis van neel right 
So, what is his experiment? So, let us look at the statement first and then we will discuss what exactly he has given. Okay, so, let us look at the statement first. Now, this was the experimental evidence which was given by Cornelius Van Neel. Now, what he stated? He was a microbiologist. So, he was a microbiologist. So, maximum contribution was given by this person only to show that the oxygen that is released during the process of photosynthesis, it comes from water not from CO2. Now, based on the studies of purple and green bacteria, so he has taken the purple as well as a green colored bacteria in his experiment. So, he demonstrated that photosynthesis is essentially a light dependent reaction because for the process of photosynthesis, light is very much essential and required also. So, in which hydrogen forms a suitable oxidizable compound and reduces carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. That means, the hydrogen as it forms the suitable oxidizable compound that means, from which the hydrogen is removed finally, the H 2 gets converted into oxygen. So, when hydrogen is removed this is called as a oxidation then later on the carbon dioxide is converted into carbohydrates. So, CO2 is converted into carbohydrates where it represents the glucose finally stored in the form of starch in the plants. So, here uh, an equation follows where 2 H 2 A plus CO2 in presence of light it forms into 2 A plus C H 2 O which refers to a compound called as carbohydrate plus water. Now, here there is a, a uh, what hydrogen when hydrogen is withdrawn that means removed oxygen is released. So, here A refers to this is nothing but this is oxygen only. So, 2 H 2 A means if it is H 2 O. So, here 2 molecules of oxygen is released. Okay, so, O 2 is released during the process of photosynthesis that was the equation which was stated by this person. Then in green plants H 2 O is this is most important H 2 O is the hydrogen donor for purple and green sulfur bacteria. So, this is in the green plants H 2 O is the hydrogen donor for purple and green sulfur bacteria. The oxygen uh, oxidation product is sulfur and not oxygen. Suppose, if the uh, gas like H 2 S hydrogen sulphide is used instead of H 2 O. Now, here in green plants H 2 O is the hydrogen donor for purple as well as the green sulphur bacteria. Now, instead of water, so let us change the statement here. So, in the bacteria. Now, if H 2 S is used hydrogen sulphide. If H 2 S is used the oxidation product is a sulphur and it is not oxygen because H 2 S. So, here add the statement instead of water. So, insert the statement here In, uh, instead of water if H 2 S is a product that is used that means, if H 2 S is the oxidation product oxidation means removal of hydrogen then the product would be sulphur and not oxygen. In case of H 2 S, if the product hydrogen sulphide is used instead of water, then the product is sulphur H 2 O used the product is oxygen. That was the statement which was drawn by Neil. Then he informed that oxygen evolved by green plant comes from water and not from CO 2 by using H 2 S hydrogen sulphide used Madhukondu. Amin can quote another other in the product E bacteria olagade in Bartha itu antandra green and uh, purple sulfur bacteria use madakundu end product sulfur Bartha itu oxygen Allah. But H2 use madaga end product oxygen Bartadan. That means oxygen which is liberated or evolved during photosynthesis it comes from water not from CO2 carbon dioxide in the Allah. You can the Balasijana either mal controversial itu oxygen in release akata the CO2 in the carbon is the carbohydrates acta thi, O2 is the release acta thi and theta yudru. But you a milestone contribution, you major contribution with our experiment the, as he was a microbiologist who worked on these bacteria. Okay. Then later on by using the radioactive isotopes also, it was proved that the oxygen which is released during photosynthesis comes from what? Water not from CO2 and by using radioactive isotopes also it was confirmed. Okay, so, that was the later research. 
so this was later proven by using by using radioactive isotopes ओके आन रेडियोक्टिव ऐसोटोप यूज मूक्शन रिज इंद रिज आगे कार्बन डईआक्सइड वाटर अंत एक्सपेरीमेंटल एविडेंस मुखातर प्रूव मतर दे फैनली एंड इक्वेशन फॉर् फोटो सिंथेस ए फैनल इक्वेशन फॉर् फोटो सिंथेस वॉज डिस्क्रैब एंड दैट फैनल इक्वेशन कम्स टू बी सिक्स ओ टू सिक्स सी ओ टू प्लस ट्वेलव एच टू ओ इन प्रेजेंस आफ sunlight and bearing chlorophyll chlorophyll iddaga matra ee rithi aguvantada then the product that we get is c6 h12 o6 plus 6 h2o plus 6 o2 so this was the final equation for the photosynthesis so look at the equation here so this equation was given finally now usually photosynthesis definition kottibittu equation for the photosynthesis and directly in the barithu but ee equation bari beku antandra there were series of experiments which were carried out by hundreds of scientists who worked on the process of photosynthesis and the final equation for the photosynthesis was drawn and here it goes with if six molecules of carbon dioxide and 12 molecules of water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll it produces one molecule of glucose c6h12o6 is a glucose and six molecules of water is released and six molecules of oxygen is released so this is regarding the final equation for the process of photosynthesis okay so what you need to do is just pause the video and write all the characters right so with this let's move on to the next part next part is as we know for the process of photosynthesis photosynthesis occurs in which structure of the plant photosynthesis generally occurs in the leaf part okay now leaf is a flattened structure where it is having a dorsal surface and a ventral surface it is dorso ventrally flattened structure upper part we call it as upper epidermis lower part we call it as lower epidermis in between these two epidermis leaf of flat irthada ಎರಡು ಎಪಿಡರ್ಮಿಸ್ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಇರುವಂಥ ರೀಜನ್ ಮೀಸೋಫಿಲ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೀಸೋಫಿಲ್ ಫೋಟೋಸಿಂಥೆಸಿಸ್ ಆಕರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೀಸೋಫಿಲ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲೀಫ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಲೀಫ್ ಲೀಫ್ ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ರೀತಿ ತೊಗೊಂಡಾಗ ಇದು ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಎಪಿಡರ್ಮಿಸ ಇದು ಲೋವರ್ ಎಪಿಡರ್ಮಿಸ ಈ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ರೀಜನ್ಸ ಇದು ಮೀಸೋಫಿಲ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಈ ಮೀಸೋಫಿಲ್ ರೀಜನ್ಸ್ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ತಾವೆ ಆ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಯಾವ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅವು ಪ್ಯಾರಂಕಮ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿತೀವಿ ಆ ಪ್ಯಾರಂಕಮ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಇದ್ರ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕ್ಲೋರೋಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ಗಳು ಇರ್ತಾವೆ ಹಲವಾರು ಕ್ಲೋರೋಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ಗಳು ಇರ್ತಾವೆ ದ ಪ್ಯಾರಂಕಮ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲೋರೋಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆ ಪ್ಯಾರಂಕಮ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಕ್ಲೋರಂಗ್ ಕೈಮಾ ಅಂತ ಕರೀತಾರೆ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಅ ಕ್ಲೋರಂಗ್ ಕೈಮಾ ದ ಪ್ಯಾರಂಕಮ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲೋರೋಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಅ ಕ್ಲೋರಂಗ್ ಕೈಮಾ ದೆನ್ ದ ರೀಜನ್ ಈ ಮಧ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿರುವಂಥ ರೀಜನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಅ ಮೀಸೋಫಿಲ್ this is mesophyll upper part this is called as a upper epidermis lower part this is called as a lower epidermis upper epidermis lower epidermis and karithivi madhyadalli iruvanta region this is called as a mesophyll region this mesophyll region consists of parenchyma cells and inside the parenchyma cells they consist of chloroplast adru vagade chloroplast irtha right now we are moving across the structure of the chloroplast and already regarding the structure of the chloroplast you have studied it in the cell chapter and the same thing is repeated here we are representing the same diagram because the next process everything occurs in the chloroplast so that's why we should know the structure of the chloroplast and hence the structure of the chloroplast is again repeated in this chapter as already you have studied in the cell chapter so already we have came across the structure of the chloroplast we have described the entire things of the chloroplast 
Now suppose if we look at the structure of the chloroplast. Now chloroplast is a again double membrane structure. So here I am drawing a 2D diagram here where the 3D diagram is shown in the cell chapter, chapter number 8. Okay. Now inside this we have chloroplast. This is the structure of a chloroplast. So here it is how it looks. Okay. So this is regarding the granum that we have already discussed and the same thing is also described here. Okay. And in between we have certain granular structures where we call them as starch granules and certain lipid droplets certain ribosomes are also there these are the ribosomes now this is the outer membrane below is the inner membrane and inside this is the stroma this entire structure is called as a single is a granum both together grana that is a plural term and each single unit single unit of this is called as a thylakoid this is thylakoid and uh, this is the lipid droplet this is the lipid droplet these are starch granules okay so these are the starch granules so this is regarding the structure of a chloroplast which already we know now look at this this chloroplast is present here you one single unit in comes of dots you you are chloroplast and carry TV so chloroplast appears in this way chloroplast is a double membrane structure which is present in the mesophyll region of the leaves leaves what are you their main function is photosynthesis photosynthesis exactly how do you okay one is in the thylakoid thylakoid will get out of the amal second part of stroma the act of the you are region the next chapter major part that we are going to discuss is in the part of the thylakoid as well as in the stroma. So until and unless we complete the chapter you just be on the chloroplast. This is the time of the chloroplast. This is the time of the chloroplast. This is the time of the process. Okay. So next till the end of the chapter you are in the chloroplast. Chloroplast bit वर्गड़े बर्बाद रे। Chloroplast वोलगड़े नहीं रे। Chloroplast वोलगड़े इन्हें नाक देती। अनोता reactions बगैना study मारो ना। Okay? So till end of the chapters, chapter we are at the part of the chloroplast only because the detailed part, the elaborate part, the entire discussion part we are discussing with respect to the chloroplast only, right? Then here along with that what we have इधर जो ते के मत इलिए नहीं रुदो। Along with that we have the lipid droplets. Certain ribosomes are there because ribosomes are the cell organelles where we call them as non-membrane bond cell organelles which are present in the 
chloroplast also. Then it has a certain starch granules. Il kamsu anta wo chakil yalla. Avo starch granules. Okay. So starch is the reserve food material in the plants. Now, the membrane of the thylakoid, the membrane of the thylakoid, it produces the energy in the form of ATP as well as NADPH. Ye thylakoid na produce akudu ATP and NADP. These are energy source compounds. Okay, so NAD, NADP is a nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. And the karitiv. ATP and NADP are produced in presence of light. In presence of light. So that's why the reactions that occurs in the membrane of the thylakoid, we call them as a light reactions because they are light dependent reactions. And the reactions that occurs in the stroma, the reactions that occurs in the stroma, they are light independent reactions. That's why the reactions which occurs in the stroma, they are said to be dark reactions. These are said to be dark reactions. And the reactions that occurs in the thylakoid, they are said to be light reactions. They are said to be light reactions. Light reactions means which takes place in presence of sunlight. Adar bagge nim gaar thakta Photosynthesis light bekla. Light is the thylakoid the membrane. It is also a double membrane bond structure. On the membrane of the thylakoid, it produces energy like ATP and NADP in presence of sunlight. That is why the reactions which occurs in the membrane of the thylakoid are said to be light reactions. While in the stroma, there is an enzymatic process where a cycle occurs cycle by which the food is produced and those reactions are said to be dark reactions. Dark reaction does not mean that it takes place in night time. This is the night time. This is the day time. This is the day time. This energy produced. This energy utilized. Food is in the form of starch. But this is energy. Energy is not ATP, NADP. Food is not in the form of starch. This is the next period. Okay, so we are going to discuss it in elaborate part. Right? Just simply remember that dark reaction is dependent on light reaction light reaction is not dark aagtade dark aadantar light alla yekantadara ee energy use madkondu ill food tayar madadathi understood ee energy the energy which is produced in the presence of sunlight in the form of atp and nadph are used in the stroma and there is a enzymatic process alone cycle aagtade aa cycle now kelvin cycle ant karitivi enadu kelvin cycle it is a very Big cycle which you are going to study it in up upcoming class. Just simply remember, in presence of light, the reactions which occurs in the th in the thylakoid we call them as light reactions. And in presence or absence of light, light early, bidly energy tandra dark reactions Dark reaction does not mean that it takes place in night time. Ratri tagangilla dark and yakarita andra adu light independent reaction. It is not dependent, directly dependent on light, but it is indirectly dependent on light. Now, light may directly depend on light, but indirectly because we are dependent on the plants for our food, for the source of food, right? So, remember this structure and based on the structure, next part we are going to deal in detail account. So, till then, stay tuned. Thank you.